Kathy's story will inspire you to walk in faith because God's got this. I uh, grew up a preacher's kid and I wouldn't trade it for anything because I had positive influence in my home, a faith foundation. Through that, at the age of 13, I went down the aisle thinking that I had accepted Jesus in my heart, but I didn't. Over the next 10 years, I thought about those moments, but see, I knew how. I grew up with it. I knew how to do it. And I remember being with some of my friends and being uh, right before we were baptized of just laughing, you know, it wasn't serious, was it reverent? And that just weighed on me and the Lord was working in my heart over those 10 years. But I kept thinking, what will people think? I'm a preacher's kid. What will people think? I sing in the choir. What will people think? I teach Sunday school. And, but I finally got to that moment one Sunday night where I realized I need to toss what people think and I need to just get down there and get it right in my heart. It has just changed me completely. And I know now that that was just pride in the way of what God wanted to give me. And it, it took a long time to break through. And I'm so glad and blessed and thankful that God you know, waited on me <laughs> through that. What has changed me is I now had the access to the power of prayer. I now had the access to God's word and his promises and his faithfulness to stand on. So it, yes, it definitely changed my life completely. What I dealt with most, I think, is um, that would raise its head um, was the pride. I mean, even though I accepted Jesus as my savior, even though he cleansed me of all sins yesterday, today, and tomorrow, there are still things that we have to deal with and work through every single day. So pride really was mine. It was, um, more worried about, um, you know, the me thing and the what would people think and, and all that, that stuff, I think was the, the biggest issue that I had. And, you know, in the Bible, it says pride goeth before destruction. And so it, it did, it took a breakthrough and, and um, man, there's freedom whenever you just let go of it. And so I, I would have to say that that is what I dealt with more you're saved and everything goes away and you don't have problems but the difference is you're not alone one thing that has uh, really impacted my life and is the life and loss of our granddaughter Bradley Faith but the pregnancy had gone fine and the day had finally come and you know how we all are in that waiting room we're just excited and and uh, just anticipating this joyous occasion like we did with Briley's brother, Jude, who was born a few, few years prior. We we're already, they finally called us all back. We could go back to the room and, and as you can envision, we've all got our cameras, we're going down that hallway, just excited. And, but as soon as we opened the door to the room, it was such a somber atmosphere that, and we didn't see Briley. And we saw that my, my son, Josh, and daughter-in-law, Crystal, were very broken. And so we all laid our cameras down and there was a doctor and nurse in there and they explained to us these complications. Um, there were many unknowns at the time and they told us there would be procedures, testing, just a variety of things that would have to be done immediately. As a faith family, we knew we had to give this to God. So we just joined hands right there and just prayed and, and just let it go. And it wasn't just giving Riley to God, but every single detail that it involved, you know, the, the doctors and nurses decisions, every single thing. And there were so many blessings though through this the biggest blessing actually was me getting to see her every single day. See, as I mentioned before, we used to live, we lived in Texas and that's another story in itself of how 
God's grace and faithfulness and mercy and, and just, just gentleness, just in his way, he got us to Arkansas, July of 2012. And Briley was born October of 2012. And uh, so we didn't understand at the time of why God was moving us this way and, and what was happening in Texas. And, but we knew God was speaking and we knew we needed to follow him. And we knew even the unknowns that um, were so, could be frightful at times, but we knew that uh, we had to follow his lead. And, you know, sometimes in struggles and in unknowns, God is speaking and it's very important to listen or we miss those blessings. And even though, oh yes, it hurt so much to see my granddaughter, Brawley Faith, hooked up to tubes, um, seeing those monitors everywhere. It was hard to watch my son and my daughter-in-law broken, but strong. And, uh, but through that, by letting God reveal himself, allowing him to reveal himself, taking or seeing this life through his eyes. We saw so many blessings. We saw his glory. So you traveled all over the United States with yes. a group of uh, Southern gospel ladies as a trio, mm -hmm. called Southern Charm. Yes. Talk about that a little bit. Oh, I tell you, let me tell you how it started. I mean, God is so crazy into details and how he brings things together. So I had a, a, a country and gospel show in Texas and these two other friends, or I didn't know them at the time, but anyway, they came on as uh, singers in, in the show. And uh, one of them had said, I had called me and, and said, there's a song I want to sing, but I want to sing it with a couple of others. And uh, would you mind coming over and listening to it? You know, I barely knew her. Her name was Karen. I said, you know, I heard Diane singing backstage, harmonizing with someone. So let's call her and see if she wants to come. Sure enough, she did. And uh, so here we got in Karen's bedroom. She had all those great big old karaoke machines. You remember how they were just humongous? And uh, we were sitting on her bedroom floor. She had made some raspberry tea. So here she plays this song. And I'd never heard it before. And growing up, you know, in, in gospel music, actually, my family and I, the Hunt family, we sang growing up. I'd never heard it before. And, and Diane hadn't either. But it was called In the Presence of Jehovah. Uh, whenever she played the tape, and we didn't have, Diane and I didn't have the words at all. We were just listening. And as soon, and Karen started singing, and as soon as it got to the chorus, we started just harmonizing, just singing the words. We didn't have the music. It was just the words just flowed. And I remember, and I think I said it out loud, but I know I said it in my mind, this is it. You know, and I was 35 at the time, which was only like three years ago. No, I'm teasing. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I was 35 at the time. And sometimes, you know how you feel just tossed about like what do I where am I supposed to be what's my purpose and everything yes. and at that moment it was like the Lord gave that to me and that's why I said this is it so from that day uh, we sang uh, that particular song on the show and then people just said would y'all sing again and so we added a couple more songs so we knew three songs and this promoter happened to be in my show watching one of my shows and he had asked if we would come do a concert, a full concert at his house. We were, or not his house, his concert house, but anyway, his uh, theater. And, uh, and we were like, oh dear, we know. It, and that was in two weeks. We know three songs. How are we going to do this? So, but just by the grace of God, we learned like 
uh, I think like 12 more songs in two weeks. And we thought, well, I guess we need to come up with a name. And so Southern Charm was kind of birthed at that point. And we also prayed, Lord, you open the doors. You open the doors. We had a dear friend of ours, um, Lou Hildreth, um, she's passed on the Gaither videos, Bill Gaither and all. Yes. Okay. She was on there all the time. She's like a, a mama in Southern gospel music. And she had one of the work, uh, oh, some wisdom she had given us and she pretty much, uh, adopted us and all, but she said, go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. And so we just prayed, Lord, you open the doors. We want to go where you're, where they're ready to receive. We want to go where we can be used to the utmost. Yes. And, um, and so for 17 years, he did that. And there were some years where we were doing 160 dates a year. Um, and, but it got to where, uh, we were having grandchildren. I mean, just different things in life that we felt that after 17 years of traveling, um, all over that it was time. And, uh, but we still get together, um, at least once a year and have a reunion. What was the ministry message that you were oh, talking? That was our, our favorite part is uh, sharing the testimony. All, all three, very different. You know, I grew up a preacher's kid and had different things that I shared that touched those in the church that had that same, you know, situation. Um, she grew up in an alcoholic family and saw things that no child should see, uh, went through things no child should go through. And the Lord used hers to reach many. Diane, she suffered with severe depression. Um, even at the age of 10, she remembers praying, Lord, don't wake me up. And so, you know, it's those testimonies that what I call bring the stage down to meet the people and uh and that is our favorite was our favorite part is you know the the songs and the words of the songs that the lord gave uh for us to share uh, ministered and opened the door to those testimonies mm -hmm. our favorite part was um whenever we were done it was we weren't done it, we loved praying with those that, that, that would come to the altar I mean, that's what it's all about is, is, um, is that, that was our, our, our purpose and, in, in, um, in helping those in need and sharing God's word, even at the altar as they came. And at the altar, there's peace. Yes. Such that's peace. That's where the peace is found. Yeah. Just taking those steps, you know, just getting there, just getting there, not yeah. even speaking anything, but just getting there. Yeah. You know, and the altar could be at the church. The altar can be uh, at your bedside. I mean, it could be in your heart. It could be in your yeah. car. Yeah. Just taking that step and just letting it go. That's yeah. where the peace and freedom is. And God will meet you there, no matter where it is. If you like this video and want to see more, hit the like and subscribe. And if you check the bell, you will always get a notification of a new video.